Hi, I'm Beth Peterson, and I'm here today with Elijah Lee, and we are PhD students in the Counseling, Education, and Supervision program at Regent University in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Today, we are going to be covering Chapter 10 of Research Design and Counseling, 4th edition, written by Hepner, Wampold, Owen, Thompson, and Wang. This chapter covers scale construction, a most fundamental tool. We will start off our talk with Elijah Lee giving us a summary of scale construction, and then we will move into the seven myths of scale construction, followed by the nine steps to scale construction. The myths in the step sections will be covered half and half by Lee, Elijah and I. And without further ado, here's Elijah Lee. As we're starting to talk about this idea of scale construction, we want to consider this uh, definition or this idea that strong science is built on strong measures of psychological constructs. In the frame here, we're looking at religiosity, spirituality, and faith. And so these are constructs that we want to look at. And I want you to start to define these terms in your own mind and consider if there are similarities or differences within these constructs. When we're looking at strong constructs, we want to look at the universality in some regards to the ideas in these constructs. A scale is a collection of items combined into a composite score and intended to reveal levels of theoretical variables not readily observable by direct means. For example, to measure acculturation, we look at responses to multiple items related to acculturation and how they are synthesized into a score to reflect the overall level of acculturation. So when we talk about level, think about scales and how scales are going to measure this idea or construct of acculturation. We're looking at specifically here uh, norm reference scales. And norm reference scales aim to differentiate individuals standing along dimensions of a given construct, whereas criterion reference scales are measured, uh, measuring individual abilities, such as achievement tests. So we want to know that Hepner and this chapter are looking at norm reference scales. And we're moving right into seven myths of scale construction. The first myth is that item construction can be done in a few weeks. This is not true. Item generation is not a linear process. You are generating your items, your pilot testing. You want to be consulting with experts in the field as well as multicultural representatives to double check on that generalization of your scale. You will have to do some translating and possibly some back translation on the items of your scale. Rushing this process could produce disappointing results. It's not uncommon for it to take six months to a few years to develop a good, solid, strong scale measuring your construct of interest in the fields of counseling and psychology. Myth number two is that items can be easily formulated without an extensive literature review. Absolutely not. You need an extensive literature review. Sound scales require items that are clearly defined, that are operationalized, the construct, and you want your items developed through careful deliberation. You want your items to fit and support a clear definition of your construct of interest, and this necessitates an extensive literature review. To provide a solid theoretical and conceptual understanding of the construct, and a literature review can provide a significant amount of knowledge from previous research considering similar constructs. The third myth of scale construction is that you can use a convenient sample whenever possible. Don't do this. Even if you're feeling rushed with a deadline, simply put, researchers are not able to construct an accurate scale without a broad sample. It is absolutely imperative that researchers remain cognizant of multicultural issues and obtain representative samples of various racial and ethnic populations. 
The fourth myth to scale construction is that factor analysis provides sufficient evidence of a scale's validity. This is false. There's a lot of technology out there right now. The techniques have advanced and these techniques of factor analysis can be quite valuable. However, in order to avoid issues of internal validity or construct validity, it is important to include measures of convergent validity and discriminant validity. So moving on to myth number five, and these are statements that are not true. A scale with strong psychometric properties developed in a Western culture is universally valid. This is false. Any psychological construct measured by a scale is culture bound, meaning that a construct measured or developed within America will not be valid in Asian cultures. Myth number six, a literal translation ensures linguistic and cultural equivalence. It is crucial to conduct appropriate translations and back translations and to seek consultations with cultural insiders regarding how the translated items would be interpreted by people from the target culture. It is important to consider cultural insiders, those who know the culture and are aware of the translation or the meaning behind the language. Again, when we started out thinking about religiosity and spirituality, think about that word in another language. A literal translation would not ensure linguistic and cultural equivalence. Myth number seven, structural elements of a scale, such as a Likert rating scale, are universal across cultures. And so as we're talking about cultural considerations, we want to see the idea of language being a place where there can be subjective interpretations, even in terms of a scale, zero to ten. Which one is better, zero or ten? It can be even subjective, even in our own minds as we're talking, not to mention in other cultures. As we move forward, we're going to start to uh, cover uh, nine steps in scale construction. The first step to scale construction is to conceptualize and operationalize the construct of interest. Conceptualize. What is the construct of interest and how is it defined? Verify that there is even a need for a new scale. Consult with experts and multicultural representatives, those insiders, as Elijah put it, into those racial, ethnic, cultural, faith and religion issues. In regards to operationalizing, make sure that your construct is written and defined in a way that's measurable. Step two is the literature review. Previous literature is going to provide the researcher with a window into the existing knowledge. You want to know what the relevant theories are related to your construct of interest, and you want to identify other scales out there that are related to it. Existing theories are going to help the researcher understand the strengths and the limitations. Pat Lackey and Sullivan provide questions to guide your literature review, and these would be a great thing to have beside you with each article that you are reviewing for your lit review. How is the construct defined conceptually and operationally in the published article? What kind of and how many concerns about testing this construct does the author identify? Were there specific empirical indicators regarding the construct listed in the article? Does that author cite other authors who have studied the construct? Step number three. This is where you generate your items, indicators, and response formats. When the items are poor, the construct validity of the scale is compromised. So you want to make sure that your items are strong. Creating quality items for the scale involves that solid literature review, there it is again, including the conceptual models and theories. You also want to include qualitative measures such as focus groups, possibly interviews with relevant groups of people, those experts, those multicultural insiders. Your items must be clear linguistically and conceptually. 
Klein has nine rules for generating items for a scale, and I'll just read through these briefly. Deal with only one central thought in each item. Be precise. Be brief. Avoid awkward wordings or dangling constructs. Avoid irrelevant information. Present items in positive language. Avoid double negatives. Avoid items like all or none of those absolutes. Avoid indeterminate items like frequently or sometimes. Develis has some additional considerations. He says that it is common for initial item pools to be three or four times larger than the final pool. So plan for this. And you want to be able to consider the reading level of the targeted population to make sure that you are creating items that are readable to that targeted population. Also, Develis says to include a variety of positively and negatively phrased items. The fourth step to scale construction is to do a content analysis with pilot testing. This is where you will be revising and administering your items in a pilot test. So regardless of your confident level uh, in the validity of the item content, respondents may perceive or interpret the items quite differently than what the researchers intended due to too many systematic and non-systematic errors. So conduct a content analysis and consult with those experts all through your scale construction. Pilot test your items to identify potential problems with their wordings. And here are some quick suggestions for when you're pilot testing. So you could ask your um, participants to respond to the items as if they are responding to items in an actual study rather than just the pilot testing. Have them identify the unclear or ambiguous elements. You could ask them to circle ambiguous items or write alternative wordings that can enhance your items. And Elijah will cover the steps five through nine of scale construction. Step number five has to do with sampling and data collection. And so this is an important step where you want to be uh, ensured that you are representing the population of interest. The sample size is also important, and it must be appropriate to what, you, what you're measuring. And um, when you're looking at data collection, the actual collection of data from participants, uh, you want to be using questionnaires, internet-based surveys, um, and also be noted that you're looking at, again, the representation, the sample must be representing the population of interest. So again, when we're looking at some of these ideas, you may be seeing some um, repeat or ideas that are consistent throughout our talk here. Uh, translating and back translating the scale, linguistic and cultural equivalence. Again, this cultural piece is paramount in knowing what you're studying, but also how the people that you're studying are interpreting the constructs. So this can lead to measurement error and mislead readers about the generalizability of the constructs. So people might be misled of a certain construct because you may have understood it one way and another person understood it another way. So moving on to step number seven, we want to look at finalizing items and optimizing scale lengths. So this is an in-depth process of the statistical analysis as Beth mentioned. Factor analysis is not the sole way of looking at validity, although we want to look at this procedure that assesses construct validity of an established instrument when given to a specific population. So very briefly, we're looking at exploratory factor analysis and then to do a conformatory factor analysis um, in order to start to look at the construct validity. And again, we're going to look at Hepner's um, text reference in the end of this talk to give you this specific resource to look at a little bit more uh, of these ideas as step number seven step number eight, sorry, um, we look at psychometric properties. And again, reliability and validity are statistical constructs, um, which are measured by um, what we would look at one way of looking at uh, 
reliability or testing reliability is Chromebox Alpha. And so there are, there are several ways of, of measuring uh, and to substantiate reliability and validity. Within validity, we have conversion, discriminant, and incremental ways of um, uh, substantiating the, the validity of the scale. So we want to look at testing the psychometric properties in step A, and also to look at the refinement of the scale. And again, this um, this terminology or this way of refining of the scale um, is item response theory. This is one way of looking at a refinement of the scale. Uh, provides the ability to assess item difficulty, item discrimination, and guessing false positives. If you're thinking about the GRE, if we're thinking about almost reverse engineering this idea of the GRE, how did they come up with it? How did they um, substantiate it? How are they looking at what people are getting right and wrong? So as we've mentioned, we went through a quick overview of the steps uh, nine steps of scale construction, and also seven myths. And these references are here to let you know about resources that you can look to, especially the Hefner text, to look at um, in depth what is IRT and what it might mention, um, and a little bit more about the statistical processes. Some of the references that we mentioned in this text, as well as a journal that you can reference um, in the Hefner text. Um, and it's mentioned in the Hefner text as well, and you can reference it and to get a little bit more of a hands-on um, learning of what these uh, idea of scale construction might entail.